Hello people, my name is Dan and welcome to my garden here in Essex in the southeast of the UK. So over the last weekend, did a bit of work here in the polytunnel, got it ready, basically planted a lot of things out for the summer. So today we're going to go in, have a look and you can see what I've been up to. So it looks considerably different in the polytunnel here from when you maybe last saw a polytunnel video. So a lot of planting out over the weekend, things like melons, chilies, aubergines, achochas, cucumbers, and yeah, there really is quite a variety of things. Also tomatoes as well, bitter melons, so much. So what I'm gonna do is just take the camera around, you can have a look, and if there's any questions you've got, please post them down below. I'm doing my best to answer all questions at the moment. I really want to push the gardening boundaries, so to speak, this year. So hopefully we can all do it together. So let's make a start. So behind me, I have Nectarine variety Lord Napier, and the tree's doing really well. The fruits are really starting to swell already, so I'm quite hopeful for a good crop of Nectarines. So you can see by looking at them, look, already about the same size as my fingernail there. And they're looking really, really healthy. The tree's looking really good as well. It's growing in a pot sunk into the ground so I can get some height. And what I can do with this is I'm going to be at the end of this season lifting the pot up and making sure it hasn't taken root into the ground. I want to keep the tree movable. I can't plant it in the ground here in the polytunnel. So here it is. Many of you have asked about uh, the banana plant. So this is the banana plant so many of you have seen before and this is variety dwarf cavendish. So one of my gardening aims if you will is to produce a crop of edible bananas here in the UK. Whether it happens or not of course is another thing but uh, I made quite a detailed video on how I'm going to be going about doing this or hoping to do this. So I'll link that video down below. You may wish to check that one out, but you can see this is doing really well. So this banana plant's been overwintering in my living room. So I'm very happy with how it's done and it's looking healthy. So whether we get any fruit or not, it looks good, doesn't it? So I've repotted the banana plant into a 30 litre pot, which is about 6.6 .6 imperial gallons. So well draining growing medium, and we shall just see how the plant does. So you can see the trunk is looking quite nice indeed. You can see it's put up a sucker there or a pup and another one down there. And basically looks really healthy. The leaves are a, a good size. So onwards and upwards. Now behind me down there, I hope you can see them, there are some pups, some suckers that I took last year. So I'll link a video down below of how I did that. So if you want to learn how to take your own suckers, your own pups, whatever, from your own banana plants, you can learn how to do it. Anyway, now this one here, the pup, the pup that I took, it uh, appeared to die and I think it did but obviously under the ground something was happening or under the you know in the pot and I noticed this the other day so that's this has got through and the same here so this was another pup I took and you can see it's put up a sucker there so I'm feeling very very positive actually about uh, getting a decent amount of uh, dwarf Cavendish banana plants so the more plants I've got, the more likely it will be that uh, I can indeed produce a crop. So here we have Musa Daggio. Look that one up. And I'm going to make a more detailed video on bananas and the banana growing project probably within you know, the next few weeks or so. Just going to skim over it a bit today. But uh, look at that. Very nice looking plant. And... I suggest those of you who are looking for a potentially cold resistant banana to grow in the UK or a similar climate to look up Musa Daggio. I have some ginger in here. Now, I grew ginger with success last year, so I'll link a video down below so you can learn more about that subject if you would like to. Now, I've got two pieces of ginger growing in here, and the main difference between the project this year and last year is this ginger here, both bits are grocery store ginger. So in this case from Aldi's, whereas last year they were pieces that I purchased from 
home base, which I presume were chosen, selected, whatever, for growth here in the UK in this climate. So we'll see how it goes. Now, these bits have shooted, and I had them in smaller pots in inside on a south-facing windowsill. Now, the growth I've noticed was a little bit slower this year, and I reckon some of this was because we seem to have a you know a, a longer winter, so to speak. You know, the cold spring has been you know a lot spoken about, so maybe that's one reason why the growth has been a bit slower. But uh, you can have a look at this and how it's going. It's in a well-draining growing medium. Ginger won't tolerate being you know overly sodden, so you can see shoots there, just one there. I repotted this up yesterday and another piece there. So we shall see how this does. The peach tree is doing very well. It's being grown in a pot like the nectarine tree. This is variety peregrine. And yeah, some nice peaches have formed on this tree. As you can see, I've left some of my overwintered vegetables and salads in here. So I've got some chard here. This is variety Ford hook giant chard got some chard and some spinach here and also some lettuce so I've got some rhubarb chard perpetual spinach Westland autumn kale winter density lettuce and lettuce all the year round so still getting some nice uh, food from the polytunnel so I've got quite a few things growing in containers so let's go and have a look at them here we have fig variety Madeleine de Deux Saison. So it's said that this variety can produce two crops of figs in one year here in the UK. So uh, we shall see how it does. It's in a 30 litre pot, which is about 6.6 .6 imperial gallons. So let's see how it does. Now it's looking nice and healthy. So expecting some good things off of this. I think I had one edible fig off of this last year, something like that. Got some fig cuttings here assorted varieties one is blanche so going to be planting them into pots probably sometime so behind me in these pots there's all sorts of things uh, growing away so let's have a look got some different varieties of tomato growing here so we have gardener's delight here sun gold later and moskvich in this bigger pot here, I have three cabbages. These are variety Offenham 2 Flower Spring, which I overwintered, so they should be ready before too long. And I've got some melons that I planted out, variety Petit Gris de Roche, which I initially planted on the 30th of March, and I planted that out on the 8th of May, so that would have been Saturday just gone. And also here I've got watermelon variety crimson sweet. So when these are done, the uh, melon and the watermelon can have this pot to themselves. And all sorts of other things here, bitter melons, other varieties of melon, okra, cucumber, aubergine. It's all here really. <laughs> cucumber, this is variety telegraph improved. Bitter melons, otherwise known as bitter gourd. Rich sweetness pocket melon. Okra, cucumber variety market more 76, check early aubergine, long purple aubergine, and more okra. The variety of okra I'm growing is super bindi. So here is my sanguinelli blood orange. So been out here all winter and you can see it's doing well. It's planted in the ground. Now it's said that blood oranges can be some of the more hardier oranges. So certainly true so far in this case and we had a relatively cold winter by UK standards. It went down, I think it was one week or so, I think it was in February time, to about minus eight, which is about 18 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. So certainly uh, was chilly. I did protect it with a blanket a few nights, but it's endured a lot of frosts. And the tree really looks quite healthy. So it was only during that really cold spell where I gave it the protection of the blanket. Other than that, it's just had the protection of the polytunnel itself and had some oranges off of it and it set some more. So there's one there. And the plan with this tree, hopefully, is to have it as a big specimen tree up the back 
of the polytunnel here. So it will be interesting to watch this grow. I've got many more seedlings to plant out. Many more things to come. The coffee plant is here. This uh, overwintered in my living room. So I'm going to be giving this a little bit of TLC soon, but uh, it's got through and there it is. I've grown a variety of chilies and peppers this year. Now, here I have Onovec, which is a nice long pepper. I grew them last year and I was very happy with them. I think this one might be a Basque. These are sweet peppers Romano mixed, so we'll see how they do. And what are these? Oh, there you go. They are Romano mixed as well. Here we have Mini Red. They're sweet peppers. And here, uh, Basque. And yeah, they're both Basque, so we shall see how they do. So we've got one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 12 pepper plants here, so let's uh, see how they all do. I have an exploding cucumber plant planted in the corner there. Exploding cucumber there behind the citrus. So I'm carrying out a little experiment here. I've got a bit of uh, no dig gardening going on here in the tunnel and a bit of dig gardening, if you will, here in the tunnel at the back. So I planted the same thing each side, well, more or less, and we could see how they do. So a giant Bolivian achocha there. Here I have Moskvich tomatoes. This here is a Siberian Lights watermelon, exploding cucumber, and at the front here, <laughs> just some, just a chili plant. I had a lovely, beautiful basque, so we'll see how that does. And there I had a, an odd, I think it's a dwarf bean that I found. This side, I have a giant Bolivian achocha, Eden's gem melon, another Eden's gem, another Eden's gem, a Moskvich tomato, Siberian lights watermelon, and uh, oh yes, another Eden's gem melon there. So some of you are probably thinking that I've planted a lot of my plants quite close together, and yes, I have. And I'm going to be trying to grow a lot of things vertically. Now, it's quite easy to start off with good intentions, but when one gets busy with work and you know, plant growth really does start to get quick, it's easy to uh, sort of uh, get behind with tying things up and then ending up with a jungle. So that, that may indeed happen in here. We'll have to just see how things go. But uh, yes, you're, you're getting the rough idea. Now I've set some yard long beans up the back there, so they should germinate in the next few weeks. And I've got all sorts of different melon varieties here. I have the Kazakh melon there. I have, what's this, Blacktail Mountain watermelons here. And in fact, there's four Blacktail Mountain watermelons. You can see really at the seedling stage, I transplanted them quite early in their life. Here I have Crimson Sweet Watermelon, and here Long Purple Aubergine. Down here I have a variety of things, and I have Crimson Sweet Watermelon, Giant Bolivian Achocha, Petit Gris de Rot Melon, Petit Gris de Rot again, Minnesota Midget, and Rich Sweetness Pocket Melon. So there we are. And here I have two little okra, okra plants, I need to plant out soon. Now here, I'm doing a bit of composting in this tun bag here. I've got grass and leaves mixed, so carbon and nitrogen. The grass is a green, a nitrogen, and the leaves are a brown, a carbon. About 50% of each one, so a bit of composting should go on there, and we'll see how it looks, you know, when these plants are finished. So in the tum bag on top of the material that's composting, got all sorts of things growing. So, achochas, melons, peppers, watermelons. So what have we got? We've got crimson sweet melon, California wonder peppers, sweet granite melons. What are these ones? They'll be sweet granite as well. Bitter melons here and some pole sea towel here and hot habanero peppers here. So all sorts going on here. So down here, all sorts going on again. And I planted yard long beans, otherwise known as snake beans or sea tail beans, straight into this pot. So we'll see how they do. I've got an exploding cucumber there, 
super bindi okra here, Siberian lights, watermelon, uh, what's this, basky chili, uh, watermelons here, three in this pot, so a little experiment's gonna be going on here, and three aubergines here, variety, check early. So once again, lots going on here. Got some grapes in here, so this is variety Riesling. Little bunch of grapes has formed there, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how they do. Got all sorts of things down here. Many of you will have seen these before. A lot of it is what I had on the table that I'd made in there. And um, yeah, so I've moved them out here. So I'm going to be doing some planting out at the allotment soon. So here in my smaller polytunnel, I have varieties of strawberries on this side. And here I have varieties of blueberries. So I'm growing them in here because it will offer some protection from birds. So of course a bird could still get in here but uh, it's less likely than if they were just out in, in the garden. Of course I could net them, but uh, once again, you know, that's yet another job that one has to do. So I'm actually feeding the plants in here and I really want good crops. So they're in good nutritious growing mediums. In the case of blueberries, they need to be grown in an ericaceous acidic growing medium, pH of about four and a half to five and a half. You can purchase ready-made ericaceous compost or you can make your own but i'm giving them a little bit of extra help with a feed so the feed i'm using for these is empathy after plant ericaceous feed and bio stimulant and so far so good they're looking quite strong so far when blueberry plants aren't in the correct growing medium they tend to sort of go like maybe a yellow yellowy color the plants look weak and they lack vigor so this is this is a good one so far and this one i'm using for the strawberries is maxi crop extract of seaweed organic tomato natural fertilizer so i'm using that one i'm also using this for the banana plant as well but uh, i'll be covering uh, bananas you know in subsequent videos in fact I'll be covering a lot of things in subsequent videos so these are what I'm using now I'm not doing any affiliate marketing or anything like that I'm not getting any money for recommending them products and uh, I'm just you know saying that so far so good they are looking good plenty of blossoms so let's have a look you can see just the sheer volume of flowers on these blueberries so expecting them to do well and I water with rainwater, and this is very nice for things like blueberries because they need the acidic growing medium, and tap water can be more alkaline, so rainwater being a little bit more acidic can be quite beneficial for ericaceous acid-loving plants. Look at that uh, bee there, look. But uh, yes, now this brings me onto the subject of pollination. The majority of Blueberries are partially self-fertile, but they will benefit from having other varieties of blueberry in the vicinity. So there's several varieties here. So you just wait and see the crops that will hopefully be coming from these. And the strawberries here, assortment of varieties, and you can see the flowers. So once again, expected some great crops. Anyway, so I got through quite a bit in that video, showing you quite a few things. I didn't go into any great detail of any one thing because I had a lot to show. So you know now know what's you know happening around here. <laughs> so if you've got any questions or whatever, please feel free to comment below. Um, you can ask me questions on Instagram as well. You know Dan underscore Home Gardens. I'm really trying to sort of answer a lot of questions now and. Uh, be a bit more detailed in my answers so you know give me the questions it's good because I learn as well so there we are anyway what you're growing in your polytunnel or your greenhouse or your cold frame or your tomato house or whatever I'd love to hear because uh, we're all in this together as they say and uh, let's all have a good growing season thanks for your time thanks for viewing see you in the next video